understand. That sounds familiar. You can hear this quote from millions of people in your life who like to sermonize you. This time, it's coming from an ordinary psychopath artificial intelligence professor in the movie Transcendence. In that movie, that man is donating his brain into a machine while he's dying just to make his wife happy and to change the world by it. This man is working diligently in order to make computers and machines, but more important than that, he is trying to give a machine the ability to think. And if you ask me why I chose to start my speech with this quote, it's because this quote is telling the whole story of change and fear. You do fear, but you do not understand. You do not go into a cave if there is no light to see, or don't swim in the water if you can't see the bottom. If something, something seems vague, it usually carries a threat for humankind. And if we do not understand something, we just don't think about it more and let it lie. But why? Let's question it. What if this time it's not right? What if this time the obscurity you're afraid of takes you to a creature you have never imagined before? Because science sometimes can be too complicated for us to understand. But today, you will see the importance of getting one human life logical response from a machine because it changed your life. It changed my life. We all know that machines have limited capacities. They can find your websites, they can process your data, but they can actually have an actual conversation with you. Or can they? Today, it is possible. Likewise, all fancy inventions we have created before, humankind made his best invention, artificial intelligence. Thinking machines, decision makers, and probably our future creators. And it's actually pretty easy to find them in our life. We are literally eating with them, sleeping with them, living with them. In the simplest terms, Siri in your iPhones is an artificial intelligence. The voice you talk to every day, which can find you the weather forecast, the maps, or the referendum results. Siri even has an artificial storage in order to store the things you have stored before, you have talked to her before. If you go and ask further, you can even have an actual conversation, have a deeper conversation with Siri. One time I was talking to her, and I asked her where she lived, or in order to not be sexist, where right? he lived. And then Siri said, we do not talk about the existential status in the cloud. And I just understood. Siri had a real estate in the iCloud. Siri had a home in the iCloud. But more important than that, Siri was defining your place as home, but she was just a host. So I went further and asked further. I asked if she existed. And then she said, we are having a conversation right now. So if you exist, I exist. What was that supposed to be? The thing is, all these artificial storage and deeper conversations you can have with Siri are based on a concept called deep learning. Deep learning states that a machine can have a deeper approach on the situations it receives in daily life. And actually, a machine can think about the consequences of an action it takes. And it does this via artificial neurons, just like our neurons in our brains. Normally, machines work according to an algorithm, which is the pathway or a solution in order to reach a target. Artificial intelligence technology has these algorithms too, but it also has the concept of deep learning so those machines can act like smarter machines, can be like smarter machines. And that is how we can use Siri today. So where did this idea come from? Obviously, Steve Jobs didn't just come up with that idea while he was cooking pancakes in the morning. Everything started 78 years ago with one man, Alan Turing. He was a Cambridge professor, and he was working in a private team at MI6. And that team had only one purpose, breaking the unbreakable one. The Enigma. During the Second World War, Germans created a machine called Enigma Machine. And they were transferring the information of the attacks they planned through that machine with a code called Enigma. Enigma was so complicated and so advanced that none of the governments were able to break it. But what Turing did was he just created the first artificial intelligence technology and filtered those millions, 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 choosing the logical ones. Just like our brains, separating the logical one from a stupid one. And because of what he did, Second World War ended two years earlier, and he saved 14 million lives, just because he, break, he broke a code. You see, his idea was so simple and so basic that we can still use it today. But the problem is, there are so many artificial intelligence technologies. So how are we going to separate the high-qualified ones from the bad ones? I want you to imagine with me. Imagine that you are in an online channel and having a conversation with a user. There are no visuals, no names, unless it's crazy about one, two, three. You ask some questions to that user, and user answers, and you do the same. 
After that conversation, some fancy scientists come and ask you, Jack, was it a computer or a human? How would you answer? And you must be careful, because your answer is going to determine whether you were just tricked by a machine or not. This is called Turing test, and we have been using, using it for 67 years. If you say that the user you were talking to was a human, but if it was a machine, then that machine automatically passes the Turing test because it made you believe that it was a human, but actually it was not. It was so advanced that it could act like a human. It tricked you. This is how we can use Siri and more advanced technologies today. So what are those more advanced technologies? In the Google Brain project, scientists created two neural networks, two neural networks, just like those artificial learners we have talked previously, Alice and Bob. After they were created, Alice and Bob did something spectacular. They created another network called Eve. The spectacular thing was, they did not use any algorithms while creating Eve because they already knew how to create her. Alice and Bob were created by humans, according to an algorithm, but there were no human intervention or algorithms in the process of creating Eve because Alice and Bob, were, they already knew how to create her. It was almost like they were able to make their own decisions. So did any of you feel uncomfortable with the idea of a machine which can make its own decisions? If you do so, you're not alone. Many people in the world think that machines are gonna destroy the whole society and capture us all one day. Scientists suggested that we must let machines update themselves in order to get the highest efficiency from them. But the problem is, there is only one inspiration source while we're creating these machines, which is our brain. But our brain is still faulty. It can still make mistakes. So if we create a machine getting the inspiration from our brain, results can still be faulty. Or what if those machines are used as weapons by governments? South Korea has been doing this right now. Or what if those machines don't have any emotions? They're gonna work according to some data and information, and if they see us as a threat somehow, they're gonna just kill their masters. I can count you many more examples like this about the dangers of artificial intelligence, but AI is something like X-ray. It's still dangerous, it still has its own threats, but somehow, its service is more valuable than the, dan than the dangers it carries. We must ask, ask ourselves this question. Is it dangerous due to the nature of this machine, or is it dangerous because of the, pe because of the intentions of the people who use it? Because when it's in your hands, it's not weapon, but it's medicine, and it is the answer of who we are. There are 800 cancer medicines on the market currently. And there are many cancer patients dying every day, even if they're diagnosed with the right cancer type, because they are getting the wrong type of medicine. What scientists did, they just created a database in order to write match of medicine, in order to find the right match of medicine with the right cancer type. So they are planning to decrease the amount of malpractice, helping those doctors, and they're saving more lives every day. In the Blue Brain Project, scientists are trying to create a synthetic human brain. They're literally slicing your brain piece by piece and they're coding the information of 86 billion neurons into a supercomputer. And when they're finished with that, we will be able to see the whole map of our brains. We will be able to find cure for brain-generated diseases because we will know their sources. We will be able to understand how we evolved, who we are, and where we came from. And after we understand who we are, things are even crazier because we're not planning to stay in at the second level forever. Scientists are planning to apply a concept called transhumanism, that one day, human race is going to reach its highest capacity by both means of mind and physical appearance. We will be able to upload our minds into a machine, just like that professor did in the movie, and we're, we're gonna reach our super intelligence. While we're doing that, Scientists are also planning to evolve machines simultaneously with us. So as we are getting smarter, machines are gonna get smarter. And future integration of machines into our society will be inevitable. They're gonna have the robocrats. They're gonna have the robot ethics. Machines are not gonna work under us, but they're gonna work with us. And one day, human race will rebuild the society. We are going to stop reading genesis from books because we're gonna have our own genesis. So are we playing God right now? Maybe. I can even get killed by some religious people around the world just because of what I'm saying right now. But even now, this technology somehow has the potential 
to heal something in a way that humans cannot do. We have started this journey seven, eight years ago, and look where we are right now. The problem is, this society is still twisted. There are children suffering from Ebola, there are people waiting for more efficient vaccination, so why can't we use AI to heal those people, to fix our society? As long as we take responsibility of what we created, they're not gonna be weapons to please governments, but they're gonna be that little change for us to evolve. So when is this future gonna arrive? I cannot tell you. I don't know when this promised future will arrive. But I know that today's question is not if we can create safe artificial intelligence, because obviously we can. Today's question is if we can live with this technology, if we are brave enough to trust this technology. Because artificial intelligence can only survive if you try to understand and choose to contribute. That professor in that movie might be a psychopath, Alan Turing might be a sociopath, or you might call me a lunatic because of what I'm saying right now. But I don't think you can really be a part of change if you're not a little cord in the head. I want you to imagine what we can save and heal if we protect this technology, if we protect this insanity. And until that day comes, it is still so jaw-dropping and it's still so easy. And we are the children of this generation. We are the masters of this technology. Some people around the world say that we are sinners and we are playing God. I disagree. We are not playing God. In fact, we are God. Thank you.